ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm John Weeks and this is The Leader. With 11 candidates currently in the running to be our next Prime Minister, we can now take a look at what those prospective PMs are bringing to the table. So far, we've seen promises around tax cuts, delivering Brexit and tackling immigration. For a host of candidates' campaign videos by the likes of Tom Tugendhat, Sajid Javid, Suella Braverman and Rishi Sunak. Britain, at its best, is low tax and high growth. So let's cut the tax on jobs and fuel. I believe I can deliver Brexit. I can unite the country. They want us to take a firm line on illegal migration so that we can stop the boats coming across the channel. Do we confront this moment with honesty, seriousness and determination? Or do we tell ourselves comforting fairy tales that might make us feel better in the moment but will leave our children worse off tomorrow? For now, those 11 candidates are on the long list. But Environment Secretary George Eustace said today he expected that to be whittled down to just two within a fortnight. So to take a look at those who've thrown their hat in the ring for the top job, I'm joined by the Evening Standard's Deputy Political Editor, David Bond. So David, first of all, 11 candidates in total. Who would you name as the top five most likely to get the role as Prime Minister? Well, it's been a head-swirling morning as we try and get our heads around the 11 candidates who have declared we might get a 12th before the day is out with Priti Patel, the Home Secretary, said to be seriously considering whether she makes a run for the position. So I think if you if you look at the field of 11 candidates, obviously it's a very crowded field, it's wide open, but I think very quickly we're going to get down to, you know, a top five maybe top seven then and then sort of whittle down from there but my five and this is probably going to be wrong but my five would be Rishi Sunak, Liz Truss, Penny Mordaunt, Nadim Zahawi and Jeremy Hunt but as I say it's it's really hard to predict at the moment and you've got all sorts of Tory MPs lining up behind certain candidates and the really interesting thing will be the threshold which the 1922 backbench committee now they're meeting later on Monday probably Monday evening, to discuss the rules for the contest. One of the things they'll be doing is setting a sort of bar for how many backers you need, how many people you need to endorse you to actually get into the race. And there's talk this time to make it much higher so that you maybe whittle out a few before you even get to the voting. So you could have between 20 MPs needed. In the last leadership election, you only needed eight. So that's a big step up. So that might whittle a few out. But in the first one or two rounds, what the 1922 committee and the Conservative Party might do is actually set a percentage threshold of about 10% to get through. So any candidate that doesn't hit, say, 10%, which would be about 36 MPs, so you would need 36 Conservative MPs just to get onto the ballot paper for the second round. So you could see a process where we go from 11 down to a much smaller number quite quickly. And it looks like the biggest sell for a lot of the candidates is proposed tax cuts to help us through this cost of living crisis. What can you tell us about the plans some of them have put forward? Well, it's so interesting, John, because we are in the middle of a cost of living crisis coming out the back of the pandemic, where the government spent £400 billion on support packages and furlough and the like. So this contest for the Tory crown has now become very much about sort of appealing to those within the Conservative Party, the backbenchers who will make this decision to convince them that they are the people who are going to cut taxes. And the argument is you cut taxes and then you stimulate economic growth. You know, the UK is heading for a sort of low or no growth period, according to the OECD. And so the whole narrative so far has been around how far these various candidates will go on tax. And Rishi Sunak has sort of continued to promote himself as the candidate, the responsible kind of grown up in the room, if you like, who will not go waving sort of reckless as he would see it tax cuts around. But nearly all the other candidates are now bidding to be the person to stand against him, really, as as the tax cutting prime minister. So, you know, Liz Truss, I think we've heard from Sajid Javid saying that he'd reverse part of the national insurance rise, which, of course, as health secretary, he would have been championing as, you know, the thing that was going to fill the holes, help clear the backlog. Nadim Zahawi has been talking about cutting corporation tax to help stimulate economic growth. 
Corporation tax, which is the tax on business profits, is due to rise from 19% to 25% next April, so a very big, steep increase. Uh, Tom Tugendhat, he's talked about cutting taxes, and so crucially has Jeremy Hunt, who has said he would cut all taxes in an interview with BBC Breakfast earlier today. So they're all making the case as tax cutters, except for Rishi Sunak, who is continuing to promote himself as a sort of fiscally conservative chancellor who wants to pay down the, the national debt. And it does seem that the economy is number one on most of their agendas. Do you think that will have an impact on who is chosen? I think that's right. I think that clearly this is all taking place against the backdrop of the cost of living crisis. And so in a way, again, Conservative MPs have been restless uh, for a long time on the back benches about the amount the government was doing to support people in the cost of living crisis as energy bills go up, their forecast to go up again. Uh, by a very large amount in October when the energy price cap rises. And, you know, there's really deep concern out there about the government doing more. Now, Rishi Sunak, of course, was Chancellor. He provided these big support packages, £37 billion. There's obviously these further discounts and rebates coming in October. For the most needy households, there's help coming even sooner. So, you know, Rishi Sunak can point to a track record of having already dished out quite a lot of money to try and help people through the cost of living crisis. But I think that's right. I think that the the sorts of commitments which those candidates, those leading candidates are making on the economy are not just for the consumption of those Conservative MPs who will choose the final two that will then go out to the party grassroots over the next couple of months. It is also for those Conservative Party members who will make the decision, but also the wider public. Because, of course, you know, while the wider public don't have a say in this election, you know, the person who will end up winning this contest will become prime minister. And at that point, they have to then try and sell their policies, their plan to help restore economic growth, to deal with the cost of living crisis over what's going to be a very tricky few months to the rest of the country. And are there any whispers or rumours around Westminster about who might be the favourite, or does it seem quite open? Well, there's lots of whispers and also lots of dirty tricks out there. We've seen this with Nadim Zahawi, who was made Chancellor last week and then 24 hours later was calling for Boris Johnson to go as Prime Minister. Uh, so, you know, um, lots of Conservative MPs not very happy about that. He's really on 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 the back foot because he's facing claims about his... Uh, his tax affairs, about his wealth. Uh, And so, you know, someone who last week looked like a really strong contender because of this amazing backstory he has, you know, having uh, come from Iraq and then sort of forging a career, successful career in business and then going into politics, you know, something that would have looked very compelling for the Conservative Party, you know, which could really choose its first ethnic minority prime minister, which would be an absolutely incredible breakthrough and, and high time too. But, you know, someone who now is facing really serious questions about his uh, own financial affairs, which could strike him out. So you've got all this going on. You've also got the claims that uh, Dominic Cummings, the very controversial former aide to Boris Johnson in number 10, is somehow working with Rishi Sunak. There was this stuff going around on WhatsApp about Rishi Sunak and about video he was involved with in the past where he said he had no working class friends. So, you know, there's plenty of stuff sort of swirling around Westminster at the moment. So it's quite hard when there's all this noise and there's so many candidates to sort of pick a way through. But I think at the moment, I think it seems to be that most people think that Rishi Sunak is the front runner, even though there have, of course, been questions about his own family's uh, financial affairs not so long ago and his wealth. But it does seem that I think just the fact that he was Chancellor through this turbulent period sort of just about sets him out. But, you know, it is wide open and the Conservative Party is an unpredictable body of people at the moment, particularly after the turmoil of the last few weeks. Let's take a break now. Coming up, we'll hear from Conservative MP for the Isle of Wight, Bob Seeley, about who he thinks are the front runners and what the most important policies are going forward. I think what people are looking for is somebody who not only will deliver some, some short-term tax cuts, but will get inflation down, will deal with the cost of living, and will be mindful that we are helping to support a very significant conventional war in Eastern Europe. I'm joined by Conservative MP for the Isle of Wight, Bob Seeley now. So, Bob, first of all, 11 candidates have put their name into the hat. Right off the bat, which ones stand out as the big names for you? I think the more likely ones are Liz Truss, Penny Morden 
and Rishi Sunak. So I think those three will provide the last two. In what order? Uh, I am not quite sure. And in their pitches, most of the candidates have mentioned the prospect of cutting tax, dealing with the COVID debts, fuel costs and immigration. Of those things being mentioned, what do you think will be the most significant for their campaigns? There are some MPs who are just saying tax cuts, tax cuts. But for the majority who are you know, thinking hard about, about what the next few years is going to look like, I think we have to remember the backdrop of where we are. We have a global economic and political crisis. And we need somebody who has a very clear sense of leadership on that. And so somebody like Liz Trust would do very well. Somebody like Penny Morden would do very well on that, simply because they've got that depth of experience. I think Ben Wallace would have done that as well. But sadly, he's not standing. So I think what people are looking for is somebody who not only will deliver sort of some short-term tax cuts and short-term support, but will get inflation down, will deal with the cost of living, and will be mindful that we are prosecuting or helping to support a very significant conventional war in Eastern Europe. And so, you know, we live in dangerous and difficult times. And I think it is that clarity and determination of leadership which is important. And you mentioned there the sort of depth of experience candidates will need to deal with things like the economy. What sort of experience do you think those three that you mentioned can draw on? Well, I think Liz will have a clarity of vision. She means what she says and she says what she means. And I think that's going to be very important. I think Penny is similar. But I think Penny's strength may be in the sense that she may resonate more potentially with the people of this country. So there are some people who get a very strong policy program like Liz. There are some people who hopefully have a strong policy program like Penny, but better able to articulate that to the country. With Rishi Sunak, I think Rishi, look, he had great experience as a chancellor. And I know he's got strong support and I know he's very popular in the country. So I think Rishi would potentially do well as well. I mean, I think Suella Braverman is a great candidate. I just don't think she did enough of the establishing work over the last few months to build herself up as a candidate. But I mean, Suella, certainly in terms of the future, likewise, Kemi Badnock. I think Kemi and Suella are both great candidates, but will probably not win this time round, but have you know a strength of character and determination about them which is very, very impressive. Even Sarge, Sarge is a good candidate. I mean, they're all, they're all, for the most part, very good candidates. And is there a sense at all from your conversations with fellow Conservative MPs about who is the favourite? I think Rishi is, Rishi is the favourite at the moment. I think he might well make it to the final two. Whether he will get the support of the members remains to be seen. He's very popular, very well liked and respected. I think Penny is at the moment likely to come in second. I think Penny's great. She's a friend. She's uh, from near my constituency, the Isle of Wight. She just comes from Portsmouth North. So I know that she would be very popular with my association. Who else? I think you've got Liz is going to run a really strong campaign as well. And, you know, you may get a dark horse coming through like Suella or, or Kemi. So let's see. And just in terms of the process, Bob, we're expecting the candidates to be whittled down to two by the end of next week, with a new PM in place sometime in September. Are you expecting the process to go as smoothly as planned? Yeah, for sure. I suspect the rules will be fixed today, as in finalised. We're going to have a new um, 1922 committee anyway, I think. Um, and I think the nominations will probably shut close tomorrow. And I think there will be an initial round of either 20. You, to, to stay in the contest, to enter the contest, you will have to have either 20 or 25 votes, which I think actually will, will slim things down really quite quickly. So I think we'll be down to maybe five. We'll then have two rounds of voting on Wednesday and Thursday of this week. And then maybe two or three rounds of voting next week. But although you've got 11 in, people will fall out very quickly. So depending on the on the initial threshold, the, the smallest round of voting will be three. I think the maximum round of voting we'll have will be five. There's more news on this story in the Evening Standard newspaper and at standard.co.uk. That's The Leader. We're back tomorrow at 4pm. <laughs>